Alright guys, looks like we're uh, getting close. As you can see, the new Push 2 is up on the screen. I'm going to flip back over, but uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to get going in any minute here, so hang tight guys. <laughs> Okay. Wave or something. Lost lights. Excited. Oh, wait, it didn't go. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so without further ado, we have uh, Thomas Falls from Ableton, Chicago, right? You're from Chicago? Yes. And Seraphin will be up after that, so here we go. All right, guys, thank you so much, Mark, for hosting this. Um, this is amazing. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming. I'm on this whirlwind tour now showing off Push2, the live 9.5 software, and the new Link technology. This is by far the best event I've been to yet. And, um, <laughs> round of applause for yourselves. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited to show you guys all this new stuff, and I also am really hoping that we have time uh, to meet as many of you guys one-on-one uh, -on -one as possible. So I'm going to try to do as little talking as I possibly can, as much showing, and then um, hopefully we've got plenty of time at the end of this uh, for you guys to get your hands on the new push and to, to meet myself and Seraphine and answer and ask any questions that you guys might have. So Mark has already told this story about this secret that I've had to keep. I've known about this for about six months, really, and uh, it's very, very difficult. But uh, now it's all public and it's really exciting. Uh, last, not last weekend, but the weekend before that, I was in Berlin for Ableton's Loop Festival. I still got my wristband on because it was such a, an amazing, transformative weekend. I don't want to forget about it, so I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep this on. But uh, I like to just think about that weekend. It was an entire music festival of conferences. Uh, symposiums, uh, workshops, panels, all based around helping people make music. Um, there was nothing about Ableton as a product um, at all for the entire weekend until the very last day, Sunday, um, there was a, a secret keynote presentation where Ableton announced these three new things that I'm going to introduce you now. Um, I'm curious, how many of you guys that are here already have an Ableton push, just by a show of hands? about half of you guys. So Ableton Push was uh, Ableton's first hardware instrument. It was designed as an instrument to create music from scratch, to put all the major elements of music making at your fingertips. Ableton as a brand believes that making music is not easy. It's hard. You need the technology to get out of the way, the tools to get out of the way so you can uh, get rid of the distractions of daily life. And for me, Push was about getting away from the computer and uh, having a way to use the computer technology and feel like an instrument. Uh, so last week, last Monday, Push 2 was released into the world, uh, the new Push. And um, if I can get my computer screen on the big screen here, and my Sorry, I'm just seeing blue screen. Uh, there we go, sorry. So, rather than talk about this, I'm just going to show you this three minute video. This is the new push.
So this is the new push, um, and this thing is just amazing to me. I really don't want to talk uh, as much as I feel like about this because I'm just so excited. I'm, I'm trying to dial some of this back. Uh, and what the, what the demo, the literature, uh, and the videos really can't show you is just the build quality of this thing. There's not a single part, circuit, or component that was reused from Push One. This is completely redesigned from scratch. Ableton now makes this in-house. This is no longer a partnership with Akai. Ableton now makes one hardware product, and the idea is that to make it as good as it could possibly be, Ableton now needs to control every aspect of the manufacturing, engineering, and design process. So we've got brand new pads that are the best pads I've ever played. I'm going to invite all you guys up to get your hands on this at the end so you can really decide for yourself. The display is the other huge thing that um, most people are really excited about. The browser in Push now mirrors the browser in the software, and the display is just gorgeous. It's taken out of a certain luxury German automobile, and um, you, you, it is uh, crisp, detailed, and viewable from any angle, which is not the case with a lot of other controllers with shiny, colorful displays. Um, it's really next level. All of the buttons are at this nice recessed, yet soft and satisfying click to them. The knobs have got this perfect amount of resistance so you can really accurately dial in your parameters and, and filter sweeps and things like that. The knobs are all touch sensitive in this really elegant way. I haven't really seen anything quite that nice uh, as far as the touch sensitive encoders go. And um, the layout of all the buttons has been redesigned so that you can create faster and more intuitively. I've had this unit for about seven days, and every day that I use it, I'm learning and, and discovering more things that, that I like about this. And um, Seraphin is gonna have the, tell a similar story, uh, similar experiences. So uh, another cool thing that Ableton did with this is when the push was announced, it's now available in stores. So if you guys like this, you can go buy it, and it is available. Um, uh, another really cool and interesting component of this is um, this trade-in program that Ableton is doing. If you want the new push and uh, you have the old push, which about half of you guys do, you can trade that in, get 30% off of the new push. And then the coolest thing that I have heard is Ableton is going to take the old push units and gift them, donate them to educational institutions that could not otherwise afford them with the software for free. Right. So I will play for you this short video explaining that process and showing some of the kids that inspired this trade-in program. Let me turn down the lights on the screen. Lights on the screen? Like house, house lights? House lights, house lights. Please. House lights. Yeah. Thank you for the suggestion. One, two, three. Kids want to make the music that they actually listen to. It seems obvious, but there's almost no resources available for them. If I can learn how to make music that sounds like the music that I love listening to, then is there anything I cannot learn? Music educators like Aaron Barrow, Lawrence Gray, and King Britt pursue what strikes me as a revolutionary idea. Teach kids how to make the music they love. The cost of the gear, of course, is a big hurdle for this new kind of music education, or many schools simply prohibitive. Here's an idea how we can change this together. It's a trade-in offer for owners of Push One who want a new push. If you trade us your Push One, then we offer you a 30% discount on Push Two. And what happens with your old push? We give it to an educational initiative that needs it, and we add a copy of Ableton Live for free. If you want to trade us your push one, or if you know of a teacher or an educational institution that works with young people on a project like this, then please click the link below. Actually, music made by the kids in that video. So that's not all. Uh, there was a third thing announced at the end of the Loop Festival that um, is maybe more interesting than all of this stuff. It's this new technology that Ableton has developed. It's called Link, and it solves a problem that uh, is. Uh, 
of syncing electronic instruments um, together in a way that you would play like in a band situation. So the inspiration comes from um, playing in a band where you don't have to think about playing in time with the other musicians, it just happens. Um, but right now, um, there's not a whole lot of uh, elegant solutions for that. So this is a new technology that is free for everyone that allows not only computers running Ableton Live to sync up, but also iOS devices, your phone, your tablet, those type of instruments. So this is Ableton Link. And this is not available yet. This is due out in January next year. <laughs> show you some of the new things with the new push uh, that has really been blowing my mind in the seven days that I've had this unit. So uh, push retains all of the enhanced melodic, harmonic, and rhythm workflows from the original push, and it adds sampling, the ability to work with audio. And um, my original electronic instrument was an MPC 4000 about 10 years ago. I used to use a program called Recycle to chop up my audio and then load them onto my MPC so that I could play them on the pads. Push has taken this workflow to the, the nth degree now, and uh, this was the first thing I did when I got my unit. After I checked out the build quality, of course the, the display is amazing. The pads are so, so playable. You, when, when you get a chance to, to put your hands on Push, I recommend you play these pads. You can now drag your... <laughs> They're so playable. It is so fast and fun. And I'm not a piano player. I'm a drummer with my wrists. I don't have like finger uh, dexterity. But this thing really, it, I'm, I'm impressing myself with what I can do. And uh, dra dragging your finger around. Just a really, really cool thing. I haven't been able to do on any other pad controller that I've used. So what I'm going to do now with this browser is load up a sample. This could be any type of audio. Um, So I'm going to go to my user library. Something that's really nice about the, the new Push browser is that your user library is first. So your sounds come first here. And uh, I'm just going to navigate to where my samples are. IQ server. So I can preview. Hey, listen. I'm a rick and I want you to play. Hit the load button. And now you can see the waveform on Push's display. So to chop up the sample, all I need to do is move the mode to slicing, and then I'm going to play with the sensitivity knob. <coughs> And you can see the slices like magic. 
So how many slices do you like? So warping now is built, in, built into the simpler device in the Live 9.5 software, and consequently it's available from push. So I can change the tempo without affecting the pitch. And all the slices... Everything will follow along like magic. So, if I don't like those slices, I can play with the start and the end point. I can nudge individual slices by selecting them. You know it's selected because it lights up. So Seraphin's going to go into a lot of these features in a little bit more in depth, but that was the first thing I did. That blew my mind. The second thing you can do when you're chopping up a sample is do it manually here with this pad slicing mode. So as you play back the sound, I can chop it by hitting any pad. And you see it slice, 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 slice. is so satisfying and so much fun. Uh, load up anything, slice it up, play it like an instrument. Uh, another way that we can work in new ways with samples now is this classic mode, where I could... So now I can play audio change the pitch without affecting the timing. So, check this out. I can play chords with songs. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to turn this over to Seraphim now, and uh, we're going to get a little bit more in depth. I really just wanted to show you some of these big highlights um, and make sure that we have enough time uh, for you guys to um, come introduce yourselves, get hands on one on one with, with the new push, and um, have a chance to ask any questions that you might have. So, um, yeah, without further ado, this is your one and only able to certify trainer local in Denver. Um, this is cool. This feels like home because this happens every month. Uh, second Tuesday of every month? Yeah, this happens. This is like the Rocky Mountain Synth meetup, and it's so awesome that it's like Ableton centric because I'm a total Ableton nerd fanboy, so it's like get to do things that I like to do. I mean, there's all they do all kinds of cool stuff. Like someone did something on like syncing every device known to man. Another <laughs> one. Uh, yeah. On, on uh, you know, iPhone uh, as, a, as an instrument. Uh, so there's always interesting things every month. This is the one this month. So I'm happy to be here and be a part of it. Let me switch over displays real quick. Cool. So um, Thomas asked me, he's like, hey, do you want to do this event? And I was like, yeah, what should I do? And he said, well, just you know, talk about your experience with push and with 9.5. So um, I've had push in 9.5 for almost a week now. And it's, you know, same thing with probably a lot of people. I'm, I'm really blown away. So I thought a fun format to do would be something that we all have is starting with a, f a clean slate, a blank project, and we'll just make something together. Whether you call it a beat or a composition or an improvisation, we'll just make something from scratch, but we'll use push as our instrument, because I really do think of it as an instrument. There's there's parts of it that are really hard, and I'm like, why is this hard? 
it's like, well, you don't know how to play the instrument yet. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm still learning things about push too. So we'll, we'll share it together. My goal is to inspire you to make more music of your own, not to teach you everything about push too, because there's things I'm still finding out. So we'll have a lot of fun. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So the kind of music I've been making lately, um, I've been I've been working with a band in Denver called Flowbots on a new album. So my my head has been kind of like in that musical space, like writing songs and music for rappers. So we're going to do something along that line tonight. So uh, what I really like first is just the browser that you can, you can find sounds. So let's browse for a sample. Uh, in the user file, this is where anything that you can add into your your browser folder. So I have a folder set up for samples, music, and Ableton projects. So let's go and dig for some sounds. And you might not have seen it, but he's just using the touch encoders. He's pulling up a sample and then touch encoder to get to the next folder down and then touch encoder. Are those all endless? What was the question? They are. So let's pull something up. Uh, One of my favorite artists is... back so notice I can turn the preview on or I can turn it off so I can turn it on also another cool thing you can do is you can hold down shift and you can turn the volume knob down which is your cue volume or your metronome volume so if your samples are playing back too loud yeah that I found that fast so I was like I gotta know that because some of the samples are blasting me in the ear so let's load this one easy just loads and it loads straight into a simpler yeah, sorry if we're fighting the screen a little bit tonight. I need to get a more fancy camera. because it's important to be around people that are much smarter than you. And there's plenty of them here. Okay, so it loads it into a simpler. Okay, so it's speeding up, which means it's not warped. So what I want to do is I want to find a little bit of this sample to to use. So um, we can zoom in, which is really nice. And let's load the start time right to the beginning of the waveform. Cool, and I think I want to just use maybe eight bars of this. So let's find where eight bars is. We'll play through it. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the menu for Simpler, and it gives me a couple different options. One is going to be Warp, so I'm going to turn Warp on. Right now it's, it's off, so we can turn the Warp on, and then it sees that it's eight bars. Um, this is the function I just I kind of found, so now I actually want to warp it as an eight bar loop, so I'm going to press that button, and you're going to see the transients kind of shift around. Boom. So now, and let's slow this down, maybe like uh, 95. change the tonality too so let's go to scale mode and uh, right now we're in C major let's change it to C minor so we're just kind of get some ideas flowing notice the glide also works that's pretty cool 
simple. So that's that's one way you can kind of get ideas is just using a warp simpler. I was waiting for this one to come out for a long time. This is really nice. Um, another way I like to use a simpler is this was in classic mode. We're going to take this over to slicing mode, and this is kind of what this is exactly what Thomas was using. So this is pre-sliced samples. And you can change the sensitivity by turning this down. And you'll see the pads start to disappear. So by pads. So that's that's one way to do it. These are just manual automatically created slices based on you know looking for those the spikes in the this the waves, all the transients. But let's turn the sensitivity all the way down to zero and turn pad slicing on. So now what I can do is I can just hit a pad in real time and, uh, and just make my own pads. Create your own order of the pads. So let's let's take that idea and, and record it in. Uh, a big fan. I'm a big fan of this feature. So this is the fixed length button. Um, this is not new to push two. This is in push one as well. So if you hold down fixed length, you get these different phrases. So let's say I know I want to do something in a four bar phrase. It's automatically going to stop recording in four bars, which is really cool when your hands are busy. So let's turn that and turn fixed length on. Also, don't want to push too. When the button is flashing at you, that means it's on. And also, it'll say in the display too, fixed length on. So uh, yeah, let's record. Let me just. Uh... session and there's our there's our first idea sweet let's ma let's make another pattern I'm getting all kinds of ideas just from these these shops uh, turn fixed length on let's go to a new idea framework down for a beat. Uh, let's add another element to it. Let's add some more. Uh, let's, add, let's add another drum beat to that. So if I go to a session view, uh, I'm going to add another track. So I'm going to go and add a something from my from my packs. So here is a bunch of cool breaks that I have. And again, you can preview it straight from the browser. Okay, great, so let's go back to note mode. And now we're gonna play that beat. So notice that it, it changes pitch, but it stays the same timing, which is really cool. Um, so if it hits simpler, go to the warp menu. There's some interesting things that you can do with different warp modes. So right now I have my, my setting set up to automatically warp it in the complex mode. But if you change the mode to something like, let's say, tones, when you stretch the pitch farther away from the original sample, you get some interesting artifacts. This has got like a cool grainy sound. Um, another thing I like too is if you go to the global menu, 
uh, we can turn on glide. So this is really fun. So we're going to turn on glide, increase our glide time. And now what it's going to do, it's going to glide up and down pitch, but it won't restart the sample. So it just get like a, like a tape up, tape down kind of a sound. All right, so let's add that to our, our beat. And you can also see that I, I kind of act, I went into the mixer section. Now we took we took a sample we glided it up and down um, and so here's the mix section uh, if I hit mix once I can see all of my categories for volumes pans sends uh, my A send is a reverb my B send is a delay if you hit mix again you can see the same uh, properties for individual channels so here's all of my mix settings for that channel or that channel or this channel which is kind of nice and uh, nine five also has the new the new meters which have peak and RMS. Uh, built into the meter, so it's it's really beautiful. Great. Uh, let's sample something else. So uh, let's go add a new track, and going to add a new MIDI track, and look into. So we're going to sample something from one of my favorite saxophonists. I, I also play saxophone. Um, that's, that's kind of my primary instrument. I do a lot of performances on saxophone as well as write music. Uh, but this is a, a song from Ornette Coleman. Is anyone familiar? Ornette Coleman. He has a famous uh, album called Free Jazz. So I think I want to add some, some hits, uh, some like stabs or hits into this beat. So we're going to check out uh, Free Jazz from Ornette Coleman. some uh, let's add some chords so I'm gonna go and add another new track and notice that I'm not really I'm not even looking at the screen which is nice because sometimes when, when you look at the screen you're like oh but I could also do this and I can also do that it really kind of stay it helps you stay helps me stay focused when I'm creating music uh, it's not like a, a good thing or a better screen to in my opinion to look at the screen or not look at the screen it's just for me 
it helps me really stay focused and keeps my ideas concise uh, and I make music faster. So let's grab a uh, let's grab a, a pad sound. So I'm going to go to my sounds folder and go to this pad section. And I'm going to turn preview off so that you don't have to hear me scrub through every one of my sounds. So I'm going to use this sound called. <coughs> colliding pad. Cool, so I bring it in. Then the note mode, so you can also create chords in, uh, in push just like you can uh, melodies. So I'm gonna go back to scale mode. And I know that, the, I know that the, back, the back track was an E flat minor, so I'm gonna change this to E flat minor. And to be able to bring in this instrument somehow. This is just like part of my voice is playing the sax. <coughs> let's add some live recorded audio into the, the track as well. So let's, let's bring in some saxophone. Okay, so um, if, if you want to record enable a track in uh, in push, if you just pull the record and then press it, now you're ready to play. <laughs> And, and we'll, we'll come up with the cool part that way. just says convert. <laughs> convert sax to simpler. Yes, I will. And that, like, for me as like an instrumentalist, that took so many steps and it's just like convert. Yep. Boom. <laughs> so uh, let me just change the scale back to C. Same 
think you can you can harmonize with it. Uh, let me add some audio effects. So the same, same workflow is really fast. So I'm going to hit add device. And go to audio effects. And let's bring in some, some reverb. Let's go down to the reverb preset. Load. Uh, increase the decay time a little bit, dry wet. <laughs> Instead of using it in the classic mode, let's chop it up like we did the drums so that I can play different different parts of that sample at different times. So we'll go over here to slice mode. Um, turn our sensitivity all the way down. And turns pad slicing on. And let's chop this up too. one more time. So turn all these off. I just hope I inspired you to, to, to make some more music uh, using a lot of the sounds that you may have already have in your computer or if you play an instrument to use your instrument in a, in a new way uh, that maybe you, you haven't done in a long time. So right now I would love to, that's cool, to, to take some questions and then if anyone wants to come up and, and try these, these devices, that'd be awesome. Oh yeah. I was going to say that too, it's not yeah, Mark, Mark talked about the filters. So there's a whole new set of um, analog modeled filters. Uh, let, let, let me bring that up. So. so let's bring in an auto filter.
we can have these different filter types. Um, so we can bring in uh, the Oscar filter. Here's one based on the MS-20. And bring up a little bit of drive. Some LFO amount. What are the what are the what are the different ones based off of? Do you know exactly? We mentioned two of them: uh, MS20, the Oscar, and the MS20, and that's Prodigy, a, and that's a mode Prodigy. Mode Prodigy. Yeah. <coughs> and they have drive as well. Uh, yeah, twelve so and twenty-four. Turn on resonance all the way up, so you can you know, switch the parameters, and then turn the filter drive. It's kind of a game changer, especially if you like operator. <laughs> And the way you can, the way you can change the order of the the devices is really cool too. You can hold this down, and it'll ask you choose the position of, and you can just switch the knob, and you can change the order. So now the grain delay is after the auto filter. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's it. Super simple. Hold down. Yeah, hold it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. So, uh, one of the things I like to do on pad style instruments is to play play it as an actual drum kit. Like finger drumming? Right. How, how easy would it be to set it up and record yourself playing the pad on this device? <laughs> That was that was almost too easy. Uh, that we, we didn't even show that. Uh, that was something that Push One can do. Um, you simply hit the record button and play the pads. Uh, okay. There's 64 pad mode, which allows you to put a different sample on each of the 64 pads and play that like an instrument. Uh, keep it so come on up and uh, I'll show you exactly how that works. So you can, uh, if you record audio, you can slice it simpler, and then the convert button converts to drum racks. Oh, great. So you can play all your parts. Slice it in simpler with that fast mode, hit the convert button, and it boom, it's a drum rack. Cool. Yeah, we take it one step further. This convert right here, yeah. like Barbara said, now we can put it in a drum rack where you can step sequence it, or you can just leave it like this in a 64 pad grid and then finger drum. Nice. Oh, yeah. yes. So I've been using the Ill Gates uh, method of, of doing the 128s uh, with sampler. Is sampler going away? No. Okay, so th does the new features of Simpler apply to Sampler as well? Not necessarily, and um, I'm absolutely not allowed to comment on any future releases, uh, okay. but I can take your feature requests, and I can okay. tell you that Ableton is listening. If you, uh, if you send an email to customercare at ableton.com or support at ableton.com, I actually get every single week, uh, they compile all of the feature requests that users send in, and um, they send it to every single internal Ableton. So um, it's really interesting to see, and then everyone votes on the different features, and that ultimately informs what comes next. Sampler does have the new filter though. Okay. But the, the new warping is not in okay. Sampler, and I'm not sure why. Okay. Yes. Uh, is this a standalone usable device, or does it require the software to work it uh, together? We're, Ableton's very careful to refer to push as not just another controller. It is an instrument conceptually and then how you use it. Uh, but technically it is a controller in the sense that all of the horsepower and all the sounds are actually coming from the computer. So it's a best of the both worlds scenario where you get um, everything that a computer does well left alone and then everything that an instrument affords you is focused so on So you need to use push. them together basically. Yes. Okay. When you buy the Push 2, it does come with a intro uh, version of Live also. Oh. By the way, these things are coming in in like three days if you order them. They're coming out in Texas or something. 
Yeah, they're available now. You can you can go to a, a store, play them, buy them. Um, I know for a fact the Art of Audio is a local independent retailer in Denver. I'm going to be there tomorrow night from six to eight o'clock, uh, and they have five of these push units on their store. And the trade-in is now like you just fill out a little form on like you have an hour back. They send you a new push with the box and you send your old push back. So you actually aren't without a push. Yeah, in case we weren't clear about that, Mark already has his push unit. He did the trade in process. And if you have any questions, there you go. So if you don't have a push one, no, no, they send you the new one run? with a box with a shipping label with a return. Right. You pull your new push out and then you play it for a couple hours and you forget, oh, I got to put the push back in the box. Uh, you put it back <laughs> in the box. If you don't have the box that has bubble wrap, <laughs> You put the sticker over the old sticker, you either call FedEx or take it down, and then eventually, you know, it comes in. Up. If they don't receive it, they're going to come back for you for that 30%. But uh, they trust you to ship it back, right? So that's freaking awesome. Right? It's for the kids. We're donating your push one unit you know, to the kids. <laughs> it's for the children. <laughs> well, somebody I told my wife that I was donating to charity. <laughs> one thing to add to your question, too uh, do you use Max for Live? The, like the one thing I like about the sampler is it has like extra envelopes and LFOs. Right. That the envelope device and the LFO device, device kind of like opens that all up. Right. So. Great. Yeah, Max for Live becomes the ultimate problem solver in so many ways. Uh, there's something that you wish the hardware or the software would do natively. If it doesn't do that with a little bit of know-how, you can uh, make it do that with, with Max for Live. Ableton's is really good about keeping these products hackable and customizable in, in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah, more questions, please. Yeah, is there any chance you can run through uh, the new multi instrument and how it interacts with Push Two from Max Seven? Yeah, um, there's. Uh, it's we're really. I, I understand we're really heavy on the new push uh, tonight. It's because it's the new shiny, exciting thing, um, and I can't stop playing it or thinking about it or talking about it. But uh, it's not just push. That we talked about the Live 9.5 upgrades. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Not just the new filters. There's the improved metering and the the RMS uh, ways to help you get your mix sounding better, faster. And um, there's new instruments too. There's new Max for Live Essentials. Unfortunately, um, we just didn't prepare any presentations on that stuff because everywhere I've been, um, people are so interested in in the new push. I um, love that new multi. Yeah, there's um, there's quite a few new instruments. Um, that's just beyond the scope of, of today's presentation. So I apologize. Yeah, bass, multi, and poly I did want to tack on to your thing about Ill Gates. I just did one of these in Seattle with Ill Gates as, a, as the guest presenter, him and KJ Sakwa. And uh, he absolutely was drooling over this thing, almost stole my unit. Um, <laughs> but it was really cool. He's performing with a, with a machine right now. And he was just like, that's over. This is, this is all about push. So you will definitely see Ill Gates with the new push on stage uh, very soon. I think as soon as we can get him. Um, and KJ have a remix competition going on now. Uh -huh. It was yeah, they were really good, um, and they play off each other really, really well. That was fun. Um, any other questions? Yes. Uh, I did have another one. So, can you give us a quick little rundown of what it takes to, if, if like, I, I teach Ableton, but I'm not a certified instructor yet. I talk to you guys about that. But uh, <laughs> I want to uh, figure out what it takes to get into the program where I can actually use one of those uh, first generation push controllers. So should we just go to the URL and check it out? Or can you well, give us information about like what it takes to become one of those people? So um, you asked about Ableton certification. I, I can actually answer any questions about that. I, okay. I run the program in the okay, US. Great. I was an Ableton certified trainer before I worked for Ableton. I certified this man here and great. every other trainer in the US. Right. Uh, but I don't think that's what you're asking about. You're well, asking about how, as, separate, as an educator, yeah, two separate things. Yeah. how do you take advantage of the yeah, training program? Yeah, exactly. Um, take one of my business cards okay. and uh, send me an email. At, um, that program is all being rolled out as we speak. So awesome. this goes for anyone that would like to stay in touch. Please take my business card. Feel free to send me an email. I'd love to chat with you or even just hear your music. Yeah, can you, yes. So we've got a third party push. Is, I mean, is the training value still viable at that point? What's a third party push? I mean, if I bought my push from somebody else, I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's worth, it's worth the 30% trade in. Yes. Uh, my question is actually about something non-push related. Uh, with the sync feature you were showing the video of. Oh, with Link, the new technology. Yeah, yes. that technology. That's, first of all, really cool idea, uh, as you probably already know. Uh, second of all, that seems like it would be really dependent on like 
what your Wi-Fi or your bandwidth is of your internet, right? Wouldn't it be hard to kind of try and keep those things in time if you have kind of like spotty internet? I mean, I know there's a lot of Comcast stuff. Spotty internet connection. I'm not an expert on, uh, on wireless networks and that technology. Um, all, all I can tell you is I've used it um, at the Ableton office a few weeks ago with my colleagues, yeah. and I think it just works. Okay. And uh, it's, it's an incredibly easy setup. All you need to do is make sure you're on the same network as the other right. things that you want to link to. And then, it, just like the video shows, it says one link, two link. You can have as many as you'd like, and um, it just keeps everything in sync. The most interesting thing to me about that, that they don't necessarily explain in the video, is that there's no master and slave scenario. Everyone has the same equal control over the tempo okay. and the time syncing. Okay. So if one person changes the tempo, it changes the tempo on all of the devices. Interesting. Um, so what's the master clock in that situation? What's that? What's the master is, clock in that situation? There isn't one. It's a shared well, clock. It's a, it's a it's a it's a new technology. Um, so um, again, just to reiterate, Link is not out yet. It's in an alpha testing phase. Uh, if you will, if you want to sign up to be a beta tester or an alpha tester, please. Uh, <laughs> My guess is probably like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it is a brand new technology, and um, there's a really interesting backstory that um, I don't think I'm allowed to talk about. You can uh, see the, uh, if you watch the keynote, though, there's a just, there's a ten minute discussion of the developer. Yes. So it sounds like the question is, what determines the priority of which? user actually then initiates the sync control to all the other instruments. The last person. They all, the one that plays the best. <laughs> <laughs> Every band has a front band, right? <laughs> Dude, you're dragging. Pretty good. Can you be our leader? Um, yeah, that's, these are great questions. Uh, I'm, because it's not out yet, I don't have it on my computer, I can't give you a definitive answer. Um, I can only tell you what I've seen and what I've used personally. So. Um, yes. Uh, if I may answer that, actually, from the developer conference, Link is an ad hoc technology, so there is no hierarchy. Anyone can change anything they want. Okay. Link is self-contained. So, so the network comes from the one that some, several people are doing it electronically. Oh, uh, whoever turns have, the knob first in yeah, that case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like ad hoc networking computers. If someone's sending a message, no one else can send a message until they're done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. It's going to be damn exciting. Uh, that's all we know. I think so. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine one of these meetups? You, everyone can get together for a jam session after this. Uh, and people can come and go, and everything will just stay synced up in time. It's really great. Um, yeah, I'm um, sorry, can everyone we could just kind of be cool? Uh, a little, let's try to stay quiet so we can hear all the questions until the end. Uh, yes, please. Can you comment as to how that timing is going to be handled? Is it an API that apps are going to have to like link into in order to make it so, like, say you're using that Korg amp app that was on the phone? Are they going to have to add the feature into their app before it will be compatible with? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, and maybe my man back here has more details on that. I do, uh, actually. Okay. <laughs> uh, the audio MIDI sync API is already part of iOS and OS X. As far oh, as okay. Windows handling of that, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but I ad hoc network my iPad and my laptop at every venue I've ever been to. And okay. No problem. So, yeah, I've done that for MIDI, but I wasn't aware of like for the timing aspect. Oh, master of it, clock so. all of it. Yeah. Okay. Part of OS Excellent. X and iOS already. Cool. Uh, let's talk after this. Okay. <laughs> I've got this. personal cards if you want to talk to me about this kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> sweet. Yeah, thanks for being here. <laughs> okay, we'll uh, do, uh, one or two more questions and we'll do a giveaway. One or two more questions and then giveaway time. Uh, and, yeah. uh, before you come up and touch, push, no drinks over the table. So and if you were glomming on pizza, go wash your hands before you touch the Please table. and thank you. <laughs> my, yes. Uh, question back there. What does the push to offer those of us that don't necessarily work with sample-based music and work with MIDI and essentially sound uh, Everything else, what do you mean? Um, 
the, you could do drums, you could do melodies, you could do harmonies, you could do sound design, and you could do arrangement, all the major elements of music at your fingertips. Um, if you're saying, why would I want to upgrade from a push one to a push two if sampling doesn't interest you, um, all this build quality stuff, I would say come up here, put your hands on this thing, and then see if you can go back. And you're able to access everything from your browser on the display on the push two? <clears throat> Plugins, well, yeah, not everything. For example, you can't do the groove. Pool. You can't access the groove pool, okay. but all your sounds and everything that you would need uh, to create music from scratch that way. Okay. Yes. And again, when we're done with these questions and this raffle, we're going to invite each and every one of you to come up here, uh, get your hands on this, and um, and put it through its paces in person. So, okay, we've got uh, one final question in the back. Make it a good one. <laughs> How accessible is the Maximus P option via the screen? Uh, Darwin Gross, ladies and gentlemen. The answer is right now it's not accessible, but uh, we're actually talking about mechanisms by where you might be able to use some jitter options to actually uh, control the interface at the, at the pixel level. So right now, not, hopefully soon.